every generation naively believes that they've pushed technology to the limits of innovation. I mean, take today's level of technology, it's everywhere. It has even found its way into our board games. Recent games like Golem Arcana, Alchemists, and XCOM integrate, if not require, a mobile device in order to play. But this marriage of cardboard and circuitry is nothing innovative or new. It's old news! Because when it comes to device integration, one game trumps them all by over a decade. Today on Thrift Sift, the series about board games that I pick up at thrift stores because they look interesting, bizarre, or a combination of both, I showcase a game that truly pushed the boundaries of turn of the millennium gaming by seamlessly integrating not only an electronic device, but also the brand of a familiar TV show that we all knew and endured. I'm referring to, of course, 2004's The Apprentice Board Game, brought to us by the truly differently thinking mind of Donald Trump, and proudly designed by Uncredited. Does The Apprentice board game still get us all fired up today as it did back in 2004? Well, let's find out on this episode of Thrift Sift. The Apprentice game is based on the broadcast television show of the same name. For those unfamiliar with this game's televised namesake, Here's a quick refresher course. The premise of The Apprentice was simple. An assortment of sometimes competent strangers would be collected together, arbitrarily split into two teams, and then inexplicably forced to lodge with one another, all the while bickering about the self-serving business and marketing tasks assigned to them by Donald Trump. <laughs> At the close of each episode, one of the aspiring unemployed contestants was determined to be slightly more incompetent than the others, and would be banished from the show by the Donald himself. The contestant's dismissal was executed by the utterance of Trump's temporarily famous television catchphrase, You're fired. The last contestant remaining at the end of the season won the privilege of working for Donald Trump. The other contestants received the parting gift of not. The Apprentice television show exemplified the level of quality expected from network television. Is it, is it any wonder why people watched it for some reason? Now, The Apprentice board game captures all of the excitement of watching people be assigned corporate busywork from the TV show, but does it with fewer commercials. Now, I know that you are as curious as I am to find out how it accomplishes this, but we'll do it anyway. The Apprentice board game includes a deck of competitor cards, featuring a cast of characters who may or may not have actually ever appeared on the TV show, a deck of task cards, featuring the assignments Mr. Trump considers crucial to running his business, a deck of earning cards, which will be distributed arbitrarily throughout the game, and an instructions pamphlet. But the focal point of the game is this custom-made mobile device that talks to you in Donald Trump's voice. Congratulations, you should be very proud oh, of yourself. Watch You've out, because as in real life, practice. Donald's this voice has no volume control. The best game ever made. Blue team, scan each of your competitor cards. Get to it. Now that we've braced ourselves for what to expect from the game's components, Joanna. let's review the instruction pamphlet and find out how to play. The instructions greet us with a memo directly from the desk of Donald Trump himself. The instructions then discuss what to do if the game starts malfunctioning and locks up, followed by not one, but two sections on battery safety, another paragraph about what to do if the game locks up, and a diagram indicating where to find the device's reset button to be used if and when the game malfunctions and locks up. So, with so many malfunction warnings, should we be worried about product quality here? Certainly not! This game proudly carries the Trump name, just like a bounty of other quality products to do so in the past. Trump Mortgage, Trump Steaks, Trump Vodka, Trump Ice Water, GoTrump.com, Trump Magazine, The New Jersey Generals, Trump Airlines, Trump Tower Tampa, and Trump University none of which still exist today. But regardless, 
Now that we have the product's multiple safety warnings out of the way, let's move on to the gameplay instructions. Place the game unit in the center of the table. Let's go. <sighs> Shuffle the deck of competitor cards, task cards, and earning cards, and place them face down on the table. You're fired. The red team and the blue team each begin with six competitor cards. Donald Trump himself provides the following tip regarding the competitor cards. You can keep your competitor cards secret from the other team or reveal them. It's really your choice. However, I like to keep my strengths and weaknesses hidden for as long as possible. It's true, and he's really good at it. In fact, I'm anxiously awaiting the day that he finally reveals his strengths. Now, after each team has received their six competitor cards, press the central unit's start button. You are now probably playing the game. You'll know for sure when Donald Trump's disembodied voice begins telling you to do stuff, nearly all of which involves sliding cards through the apparatus. <laughs> If you miss one of the machine's instructions, don't worry, because as Trump states in the rules pamphlet, if at any time during the game you didn't hear what I said, press the start button and I will repeat myself. Next time, pay better attention. But what if we didn't hear what you said because the game malfunctioned and locked up? Throughout the game, Mr. Trump barks out random tasks to anyone who's listening, and you'll respond by selecting the competitor from your hand with the best skill for that task, and then scanning their card, somewhat like that. Then, on the next turn, you'll do it again. And again, and again, and again until the final round, which reveals a twist that there is no twist, that's pretty much it. So, what kind of tasks will Donald Trump and his gaming device made from space-age polymers be assigning to you? Some examples of these tasks include to create a point of purchase display and sell the most Trump games at Toys R Us. I think that this is actually a trick question, because in my experience, any local thrift store already has a nearly infinite supply of Trump games. Weeding out the weak contestants with a fool's errand, I admit, that is clever, Mr. Trump. To look over Donald Trump's taxes from the last year and find the most mistakes, saving him the most money. I would assume that your first mistake was giving complete strangers access to your personal tax records. To sell designer shoes to people on the streets of New York from the back of a van. Because no business plan that originates from the back of a van has ever been a bad idea. To earn the greatest profit selling bags of dirt on the streets of New York. Now that's the stupidest idea I have ever heard in my life. Why don't you just try selling little black boxes of bull... Alright Trump. You win this one. And finally, the task that encapsulates everything that has made Donald Trump what he is today. The pinnacle of free enterprise. The most innovative, how could this not be a good idea that anyone ever in the history of civilization has ever had on this or any other planet task. To collect the most money while living on the streets of New York as a homeless person. Okay, now, now you may assume that this card simply just has a series of very elaborate typos. And you may argue this because a, a typo is the only way someone would allow their name to be branded onto a game that insensitively, disrespectfully, and asininely implores people to impersonate destitute vagrancy for the sole purpose of increasing their chances of winning a vapid recreation of an insipid television game show. But you don't realize that this is actually an act of compassion. Because if capitalism has taught us nothing else, it's that competition results in strength. 
and by competing directly with the homeless, you're teaching them to become better entrepreneurs. By mocking them for profit, you're performing a public service. And remember, this public service suggestion brought to you by Donald Trump. <coughs> Now, the only thing more blatantly inspiring that Donald Trump could do would be to include himself on a competitor card with maxed out stats. Of course he did. At this point, it's perfectly logical to be wondering, what will end this game? Well, as the number of competitors dwindle, one team will inevitably run out of competitors. But instead of taking this opportunity to declare a winner, Gameplay is prolonged by performing a corporate shuffle in which the player with more competitors still in hand gives several of them over to the other player. You'll still have no idea of what skills you'll need for the tasks ahead, which, you know, may make the exercise seem random and pointless. But don't worry, no, you're not alone. Trump himself demonstrates his wisdom with the following suggestion. But do your best. I never said this would be easy. Yes. Don't bother trying to employ any strategy or tactics while playing this game because Mr. Trump never said that this was going to be easy. Well, to his credit, he never said it's going to be fun either. But, hmm. The game does eventually end with some kind of, I don't know, final boardroom showdown. And I'm, I'm going to have to take the rule pamphlet's word for it though because by this point in the game, I've, I've usually succumbed to card sliders fatigue and I've collapsed in a heap under the table. So while I can't tell you how the boardroom showdown works, I do bet it involves listening to Donald Trump's voice while sliding cards through the machine. The winner of the game is the player with the last competitor remaining, whom Mr. Trump then ordains to become his young apprentice. The winner can then continue on the path to greatness, just like this person from the Apprentice TV show who went on to a... Uh, well, or this one who, uh, or this one, this one who went on to appear on subsequent seasons of the TV show. The instructions then conclude with one more section about defects and damaged parts. Now, before playing the game, I was skeptical that a mere board game could capture the excitement of watching people on TV do menial tasks for Donald Trump. But I have since changed my mind, because I think the pointlessness of the randomly assigned tasks is an excellent representation of what it would probably really be like to work for Donald Trump. Now you have just about as much control over the outcome of this game as you do over the TV show. So in that respect, the Apprentice television program is faithfully adapted by the Apprentice board game, a game that truly is an innovation, because you know, I can't think of a single other game that's ever dared to put you in the role of someone pretending to perform arbitrary random business tasks by repeatedly mimicking the act of paying for a pack of cigarettes with a credit card. Now that is innovation. Some examples of these tasks include to go around performing good deeds for people and see how much you can earn in tips. You were this close to common decency. To sell incense to the passengers on the subways of New York City. This is an excellent enterprise for anyone who hasn't been beaten up in a really long time and would like to rectify that. To understand the meaning of the phrase selling ice cubes to Eskimos and collecting donations for me, Donald Trump. Okay, wait a minute. Taking advantage of board game media to solicit donations from the public? God, that's disgusting. And I'm gonna be sure to bring this up in more detail during the next Pair of Dice Paradise fundraiser campaign. Paradise, paradise.